Hello and welcome to today's video on plant biology. I'll link the other plant biology videos in the description below. So the first kind of concept we're going to look at is the root hair cell and how water is taken up from the soil. Plant roots are surrounded by soil particles and the outermost layer of cells, otherwise known as the epidermis, contains root hair cells that increase the surface area of the root. These cells absorb minerals from the soil by active transport using ATP for energy. The minerals reduce the water potential of the cell cytoplasm and this makes the water potential in the cell lower than that in the soil. Water is taken up across the plasma membrane via osmosis as the molecules move down the water potential gradient. So basically the minerals go in via active transport and make the root hair cell have a lower water potential and as we learned from a previous videos the water potential outside might be zero and it might be minus 500 inside and so water will move in this direction because it's moving down a water potential gradient via osmosis into the root hair cell. The next concept we need to look at is the Casparian strip. Basically the Casparian strip blocks the apoplast pathway between the cortex and the xylem. So as we learned in the other video the apoplast pathway goes through here and through here and then it's diverted at the Casparian strip in between the cortex and the xylem. Um, it ensures that water and dissolved nitrate ions have to pass into the cell cytoplasm through the cell membranes. Nitrate can be actively transported from the cytoplasm of the cortex cells into the xylem and this lowers the water potential in the xylem so water from the cortex cells follows into the xylem via osmosis. Once the water has entered the xylem it cannot pass back into the cortex as the apoplast pathway of the endodermal cells is blocked. So it goes in via osmosis and it can't come back out. The next thing to look at, um, or the next three things to look at, is how water moves up the stem. And these are the three theories that scientists have at the moment. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in plant biology, so this is kind of why. Because the theories, they're kind of, they're kind of good, they're kind of bad, they're kind of logic. I don't really know. They're all a bit wordy though. So the first one is root pressure. And basically root pressure is the action of the endodermis moving minerals into the xylem by active transport and it drives water into the xylem by osmosis as we've just said and this forces water into the xylem and pushes the water up the xylem. Root pressure can push water a few meters up a stem but it can't account for water getting up to the top of very very tall trees. Yes, so the next uh, theory to look at is the transpiration pull. And this one is very wordy, so I'll try and condense it down as much as I can. Basically, the loss of water via up, uh, evaporation um, from the leaves must be replaced by water coming up the xylem. Water molecules are attracted to each other by forces of cohesion. It's good probably to put on a flashcard um, cohesion and adhesion and their definitions. So basically the definition of cohesion is the attraction of water molecules for one another and adhesion is the attraction of water molecules to the walls of the xylem. So basically as the molecules are lost at the top of the column the whole column is pulled up as one chain. This creates the transpiration stream which is another important concept to learn. The pull from above creates tension in the column of water and this is why the xylem vessel must be strengthened by lignin as we've learned in previous videos. The lignin prevents the vessels from collapsing under tension. Because this mechanism involves cohesion between the water molecules and tension in the column of water, it is called the, co the cohesion tension theory. As it's just a theory, we don't really know if it actually happens. But remember, transpiration pull is um, connected to the theory of cohesion tension. And it relies on the plant maintaining an unbroken column of water as um, it goes up the xylem. If the water column is broken in one xylem vessel, the water column can still be maintained through another vessel via the pits as we learned in previous videos. The final method, which I really like this diagram, is capillary action. It's more of a physics idea that we've stolen um, to put in our little biology textbook and it's just a small definition here. So basically it says the same forces that hold water molecules together also attract the water molecules to the side of the 
xylem vessels, and this is called adhesion, as we said earlier. Because the xylem vessels are very narrow, these forces of attraction can pull up the water by the sides of the vessels. So basically, uh, this is the xylem, and this is not the xylem, because so the xylem isn't wide, and the xylem is narrow, and so this is how it works via capillary action. And that's basically all you need to know for now. I'll see you again soon.